Hello and welcome to another step-by-step -step how to tie tutorial video. This is Mark's Minnow. This is a slight variation thereof, so I am calling this Mark's Minnow a slight return. This is tied on a size 4 Mustad 3366 hook. I am using an old olive waxed thread. This is where the variations uh, start. Uh, instead of using a grizzly marabou, I'm just using a strung dark olive marabou. Instead of using a uh, diamond braid, I got this little trick I'm gonna use here with this Mirage Accent Opal Crystal Flash. Some beautiful looking stuff here. I am also using a wire ribbing. This is a 13 one hundredths fine gold wire. And another variation is the hackle on the front. I do not have any grizzly olive, so I am just using plain dark olive. And I'm using that same marabou for the uh, back on this fly. So we'll go ahead and remove the sample and attach our blank hook and like all good flies they begin but with just a single wrap of thread we'll go ahead and get that started on there and the first piece we're going to tie in is our ribbing it's always good to tie in your ribbing on the closest to the shank that way it gets the tightest bind And we'll go ahead and run this all the way down towards the shank, towards the bend of the hook. And I'm just going to favor the far side of the hook on this wire. This way I can get a clean angle of my marabou tail. Run my thread forward again. And I'm going to tie in some of this Opal Mirage Accent Tinsel this crystal flash and we're going to run this the full length of the body and when I get towards the bend I'm going to favor the near side of the hook once again that's so I can get a clean exit off the back of the hook with my piece of marabou it's okay to run your thread back and forth a little bit Build up the body, make sure everything's secured nice and tight. Piece of marabou. We're going to measure this out one hook's length and tie that in on the back side. Some tight locking wraps. And I like to just run my thread forward. And I'm just going to lay that whole piece of marabou down. Again, I'm going to use this to help build up a little bit of the, little bit of thickness into that body. Trim off your marabou, and we're going to lock that down from rear to front, and front to rear. All right, now when I'm back here this next time, I got another marabou here. This one's a fresh one. I'm gonna just select some of these fibers, kind of line up the tips as best as I can. And I am going to tie in a small, smaller batch of these marabou fibers. And I'm gonna tie these in by the tips facing forward. Once that's locked in, this is such a small piece of bulk, it'll even out once we start wrapping our flash forward. There we go. All right, now to take our flash forward, I am going to go ahead and grab a hold of it by these hackle pliers 
and give it a little bit of a twist. I'm going to take these twists clockwise, and this will help me maintain a little bit of a ribbing. That way the crystal flash doesn't lay down completely flat. I do want a little bit of bulk in this. This is not the ideal way to do it with the crystal flash, but I think it's a good alternative to having um, some of that diamond braid. I was experimenting earlier with uh, some mylar tubing and that didn't really work out that well. Not quite like how it is shown in the picture in the book that I'm looking at, which is a still water book. Not all fish are found in rivers. All right, I've got this almost all the way up here. One last turn. And I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room at the head. That's one of the mistakes I was making early on. I was crowding the eye. All right, trim off my excess here. And I'm going to take the last piece of marabou that I tied in, collect the thoughts here, and lay that down on the top side of the hook. Take a couple securing locking wraps. Trim off our excess. And now we're going to come forward with some counter wraps. And I'm going to take these opposite of the wraps I did with that crystal flash. Nice even segmentation. This is what's holding that top marabou back down. It's kind of opposite of a flashback if you think of it. But I hear it works. I hear it works well. This is Mark's Minnow, a slight return. Really the only variation is the the body substituted and the tails are substituted in the front hackle. Go ahead and trim off my fine gold and we will prepare our hackle feather. This is an old beat up hackle feather. Nothing, nothing fancy about this one. Trim off the fluff, and we'll give this a little bit of a buzz cut. That way we can lock the stem down nice and tight. Come back a little bit, lock this down. And when I palmer this, when I do my hackle up here on the front, I'm gonna run it all the way forward to the eye. So when I return and do some wraps to build the head, I will take these fibers and fold them back so they're not sticking out perpendicular to the hook shank. I actually have a wonderful opportunity to meet in Nomark see him once a month at my local fly club meeting he was doing a demonstration and he pulled out a couple of couple of books I asked him if I could borrow them and there it is page 81 Mark's Minnow so Mark I hope I'm doing this enough justice Mark's Minnow, a slight return. We've got to build that up a little bit just to get enough of a ramp to get some of these hackle fibers to fold down. There we go. Once it's enough to take a bite, then you can just start to build your head.
And we'll do a nice big solid head up here, locking all that down. It's a beautiful thing. We'll come into a couple of turns on the whip finish. One, two, three, we'll do four, we'll do five, why not? I know some people are very particular of how many turns they do on their whip finish. Some people will do it three or four times. They'll do the whole process three or four times. Just a few turns. That's all it needs. All right, come in here with some uh, some of the secret sauce. Some good old Sally Hansen's Extreme Wear Hard as Nails. And a little tip is to go ahead and trim your brush down a little bit. You don't, you're not trying to cover a full size finger. We're just covering the heads on our fly. So go ahead and trim that, trim those brushes down a little bit. You'll have a little bit more precision. Accuracy and precision are two different things, so precision is something you can control. Accuracy is entirely up to you, if that makes sense. The tip of this bodkin is very precise, but it's only as accurate as I am. All right, so that, my friends, is the Marks, Marks Minnow. A slight return, just a slight variation thereof, but it should definitely fish. Thank you for watching. Happy tying everybody, and with this one, most definitely, tight lines.